I'm not I'm eating. I'm, I'm, I can't believe it. This is a fasting month for us. For 30 days, we don't eat or drink in the day, daylight hours. It's called Ramadan. I was on one, man, but that's true. There's a reason for that, but I don't expect people to really understand it. They're not good for skating at all. I don't wear those anymore. I'm always retarded. I was really extreme in the beginning, man. Like anyone who comes into, into a new religion, they're overzealousness, you know? It's at an extreme high. And at the cost of like your friends, and I mean, I turn my back on skating, and I turn my back on a lot of people. And I, I regret a lot of that. Not just in regards to leather socks, but beyond that, you know, sorry to all those people I was rude with out there. I think it was the summer in 1994, I rode for New Deal. So we go to Europe for a couple contests and a few demos, and Jordan goes crazy. And it first starts by um, Jordan just not coming home one night, which, like, if you're on tour with a bunch of pro skaters, it's a pretty normal thing. It's potentially a good thing. And then Jordan doesn't show up for a couple days, and we're, like, at a contest in Germany, and, like, Jordan misses practice, then misses the contest, and then we're starting to, like, be concerned. Then, all of a sudden, I hear, I'm going back to the hotel, and someone's like, Jordan's back, and he's lost his mind. <laughs> Go to the hotel, and Jordan is just, like, obviously, he was on some sort of drugs or having some sort of flashbacks. I've, I feel like I've almost erased all of this traumatic experience from my memory because it was so like bizarre to me, but I just remember him freaking out and climbing in the stairwells and we thought he was going to jump out of the hotel. It was scary as crap. So I eventually fly back to California a few days later and the craziest thing was getting a phone call from Jordan. What had happened is he had flown back to the States and he was still looped out on the plane and they actually took him off the plane and took him to a mental hospital in like Newark, New Jersey. I don't think he really caused that much of a disruption on the plane, but they just realized like this dude's out of his damn mind. We're taking him to the mental hospital. I get a call a few days later in California and Jordan is still like out of his mind. I'm like, Jordan, are you okay? Like what's going on? He's like, yeah, I'm great. I, uh, you know, these people found me uh, and got, I got hired to act in a movie and there's like all these, like he thought he was in a movie and he was in a mental hospital. <laughs> and it was just like so bizarre and yeah, it, it was traumatizing. I didn't really hear from him for a while and I think he was like pretty embarrassed about the entire situation. I'm glad he's doing better now. <laughs> A year before then, I was with Danny Way, Josh Swindell. Josh Swindell is in uh, prison now for murder. But we went up to the mountains. We we're gonna take some, some LSD. Massive. Josh, he's like, six is equivalent to one. Six equivalent to one? That's not enough. So he gave me 30. <laughs> I'm not making this up. So they got him not burnt, man. Like I could have been like super, like. Arr, arr, arr. <laughs> so I took 30. There wasn't actually any hallucinogenic inside the acid. It was just the strychnine, which is the component of LSD, to hold it to the paper. It's rat poisoning, basically. It's just bad LSD. So I took 30 hits of rat poisoning, and my throat started to lock up, and my heart started to like. <laughs> so what happened a year later? I was in Europe, skating really hard. I think I was in New Deal at the time. So I was like with Neil and all those guys. I remember like flipping out on Neil and he probably had stories for you. I was just gone, just mentally just twerked. I mean, I almost got in a fight with, with Mike V, which I think he was like nice enough just to not. <laughs> he was like, dude's jacked up, all right. We'll let this one slide. So he probably knew I was, I was messed up. I wound up going to the doctor. He said you have chemical hepatitis, which was like a fungus running to my blood. That stuff that was in me from that rat poisoning, the effects is, is mag it's like immense depression, chemical imbalance, you know, like my whole equilibrium was off, so when I tried to ride, I was like, didn't feel normal anymore. Realistically, I didn't quit skateboarding. That was the reason why I kind of like, kind of got out of it just because I was health-wise and just from the impact of that whole experience, I just, it took me like almost eight to ten years just to recoup from the 
intestinal damage that was done. That's what it was. Though. I mean, I definitely went crazy. But I mean, there was a, it wasn't just for no reason. There was definitely something, something that happened. prompted it. You know. I picked up Eddie back at his house actually and took him to the airport. That was a blow though too because I was like, damn, I'm driving a taxi and this dude he can't even do a frontside grind properly, and I'm picking him up and taking him there. <laughs> I'm joking. I wouldn't say that to Ed. I worked with AT&T for about like seven years after the cat, working on like cell sites. So we would work at like airports. So we've had multiple occasions where I'm at the airport, I'm in a car, with a laptop, and a phone, and I have a beer, and I'm Muslim, of course. I immediately get detained, get questioned, come on the list. Not the no-fly list or whatever, but I'm on a list now so that like, so that I have to go through the motions now, yeah. They'll ask you, do you know Osama bin Laden? I fucking know Osama bin Laden. Yeah, I was on the desert, man. I was hanging out. I noticed this camel from a distance and some tracks. I went over it. Whoa, it was Osama bin Laden, man. We hung out for a little while, had some tea. And I always felt like these people are taking me to Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> Cause you don't know, man. You hear in horror stories, man. People like getting set up and framed, and for real. You type my name in like five years ago, Jerk and Jordan would be the first thing to pop up. So I had all these friends of mine, or, or parents, friends of the family, that wanted to like, you know, what did you used to do? And, and I'm giving my name, and I realize like, then like afterwards they got like, kind of all quiet when they would talk to me. Gator was on the vert ramp. I think it was like myself, Mike Lucifer, a few other heads. So Gator, was two weeks before he turned himself in, he started pouring like water off the deck. I think the holy water of so and so or whatever, or holy water of Jesus. Or I don't know what he said. I don't know, something came over me where I started singing a song to him, the MC Hammer song, We Have to Pray. Just to make it today, you know, I started singing that loud up to like, and I got on the platform and I never saw so much rage before. He grabbed his board. <laughs> hey, you? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, when you want to, like, do, hit someone, you're pulling your. Like, that was a pretty scary time. I thought I was going to get clocked. <laughs> if I would have known what happened, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even probably have been at the park. <laughs> I would have stayed home. We live in igloos, everyone can play hockey, we can all speak French. I actually wish that all of those stereotypes were true, but they're not. Utterly stupid shit has been said in the world of skateboarding to the wrong people. Like The cops let me go, but not before I ended up with a broken nose. <laughs>